I've got it. I finally found a way to be happy. Well, not truly happy because watches are materialistic objects, blah, blah, blah. But I've found a way to be truly happy with the watches that I own. We need to embrace the imperfections. I've been thinking about this. What makes a watch perfect? What is the perfect watch that everybody seems to talk about? Everybody seems to want and complain when we don't get those specifications to the dot. Why are we so obsessed with the perfect watch or the perfection in every single watch? And what happens when we get that perfection? What happens when we get all those things that supposedly will make our lives perfect? It doesn't happen because there is no such thing as a perfect watch. There is a relative perfection uh, which I'm going to talk about, but there's a reason why I intentionally, deliberately choose imperfect watches. But before I get eaten alive, let me just clarify this, okay? I'm not saying that bad watches are good. There are compromises in watches, and sometimes those compromises can be a good thing. There is a silver lining to imperfections in watches because that that's what makes watch collecting and exploring watches that much more fun. A perfect watch is great at everything. It's gotta, it's go anywhere, do anything. It has that perfect water resistance. It has a great price. It looks okay uh, for at least most situations. And it has that in-house movement that you wanted for uh, under a thousand dollars. In fact, it is so good that it makes having another watch redundant, boring, unnecessary. You know that instance where you have 10 to 12 watches and you just keep grabbing onto that one piece every time? That. That's a perfect watch. But is that a good thing or a bad thing? In my opinion, a perfect watch is for someone that is at the end of their collecting journey or someone that doesn't care about collecting watches as much as wearing them. Theoretically, this is the go anywhere, do anything, the ultimate wrist companion. This is something that I would imagine somebody like my dad would wear. He wouldn't care about owning multiple watches. He's not a watch nerd who cares that much about, you know, the brand's history and collecting every single complication or style. He just wants, he would just want one watch that is reliable, can do everything, can work for every situation. I deliberately go for the imperfect watch. In my mind, an imperfect watch means that it is better at one thing than being good at everything. It comes with compromises. It's basically saying you can't have everything all at once because then it would be the end. Recently, I got hands-on with the new Black Bay 41. I still preferred the 58 with those four rivets, without the Metas certified movement, without the T-Fit clasp. It's not a bad watch in any way. In fact, I would categorize that as a perfect watch. If somebody wants a new tutor and they're not particular about, you know, any specific colors or they just want the best everyday tough tool watch. Uh, and when I say tool watch, it means that it can basically handle life. It can do it or it can withstand anything. I would tell them to look at the new Black Bay 41. It's almost perfect. But this is where desire, this is where emotion comes with watch collecting, that it beats logic. It beats rationality. There's no more rationality when you compare a Tudor Black Bay 58 to the newer Tudors, the newer dive watches. Here's my problem with the perfect watch. Whatever is perfect today Two, three years later, it's not going to be perfect anymore. There will be an evolutionary step by the brand to make it even better. This may be deliberate, but it also may not be because technology is changing. New materials are being experimented on every day. Ceramic that was 10, 20 years ago isn't the same ceramic that is being used today. It's much more robust. So waiting for that perfect watch or the idea, the, the, the obsession with perfection, it's going to lead to disappointment. 
And this is why we see compromises in watches. We see deliberate compromises in a way. We see watches with 30 meters of water stents costing much more than watches with 300 meters of water stents. Doesn't mean that the 30 meters is bad. It's just that it is made for a different purpose. Where am I going with this? I have no idea. This is just a brand therapy session that I, I just had to get it out because I've just been thinking about this, you know, like what is it about watch collecting where we are so obsessed with searching for perfection, which is such an oxymoron because mechanical watches can never reach perfection, not in this era of atomic time. For me, the function of a watch nowadays is that I can just look at it at a glance without, you know, bringing out my phone, which is uh, something that I, I don't want to keep having to look at a screen uh, to, to tell the time. Knowing that a watch can withstand a lot of the test of time in different environments, that fascinates me. Every watch has its story. Every watch has its strengths and weaknesses. So um, that's it for me. I'm, I don't know where this is going, but I'm going to stop here. What do you think? I want to know your thoughts. This would be such a cool topic to talk about with another person, but you guys are listening, right? So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this, this idea of a perfect versus imperfect watch. How do you define a perfect watch? What makes it good enough for you? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.